Good morning, this is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Daily, and today we have a very interesting case. When I was just first starting out, these lesions gave me a, a pretty hard time, so I figured I'd show it to you. So this is Rosai Dorfman. This is usually a, a disorder that involves lymph nodes, but when it comes uh, occasionally, it'll present in the skin, and we call it Rosai Dorfman because it's just easier to say than sinus histiocytosis with massive, massive lymph adenopathy. But these lesions are large masses. Um, and let me pull up a clinical picture and you can see what we're talking about here. So this is sort of a classical example when it's in the lymph node. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you ever had strep throat, it's a very similar kind of swelling of your lymph nodes or enlargement of lymph nodes, but Rosai Dorfman is, you know, much, much more pronounced. Surprisingly, though, these do not actually typically cause any pain, and most patients are actually asymptomatic. When there are symptoms, they can range from fever, night sweats, unintended weight loss, things like runny nose, and uh, a general sensation of feeling sick. So when Rosai Dorfman involves the skin, um, the lesions are typically kind of pink to red in color. Sometimes they can have some yellow tinge to it. Um, and they can take on forms of little papules, uh, larger nodules, and also plaque form. So this is what a, you can see this pink to red color to it. Now, microscopically, you can see that most of these tumors are within the subcutis, but occasionally you can get, have primary dermal lesions. So from a low power perspective here, you can see the, the main thing that I like the, you know, from a low power perspective to make the diagnosis is this kind of bluish color, blue and sort of a blush pale or pink color in between. And all these like areas here are fibrotic zones. So you have a multi-nodular thing here microscopically with blue and then kind of pale pink in color. So let's take a closer look at what these cells are and what the, what's going on. So on higher power, you can see that the, the pale cells are, uh, sorry, the, uh, the blue cells are actually lymphocytes and plasma cells. So lymphocytes and plasma cells. Plasma cells are a, a very common cell type that, that, that is seen in. So here, here are your plasma cells. You remember from medical school or, or uh, college, Plasma cells are cells that you have the eccentric nucleus where it's pushed off all the way to the corner and then you have this pale area in the middle and that's your Golgi zone. Um, the lymphocytes are just the really dark cells scattered in between. But the main cell type here in Rosai Dorfman is the histiocyte. So all those kind of pink areas that we saw from lower power, those are all histiocytes and you can see them prominently here. So the histiocyte in Rosai Dorfman is fairly characteristic and you can see that the cells are huge. Um, I'm trying to draw a, the cytoplasm here. That's about one cell. Here's another one just adjacent to it. And you can see that the nuclei are also massive. And this area here, we call this vesicular or open chromatin, which means that in part, you can see sort of through, it's sort of translucent. And those little black dots that are stippled around there, those are uh, your chromatin, which is clumping. So, you know, these are all histiocytes in here. Another characteristic feature is that usually in these histiocytes, you, um, there are prominent nucleoli. It's just really hard to make out on this di digital image, but I'll show you another picture in a second. <clears throat> so, you know, these here are the histiocyte, and these are your characteristic open powdery, uh, open vesicular chromatin, and that guy there is your prominent nuclei, and you can see that almost all of them have that appearance. <clears throat> so coming back to our case, the other, other thing about to say about these histiocytes is that it forms like a meshwork of all the other histiocytes in here. I, I can't even clearly define them, but I have another feature here is you can see that the, this inflammatory cell, these are all lymphocytes that are sort of hanging out in the cytoplasm of this histiocyte. These cell, cells are still viable. Um, they, they are not being destroyed at all. You can see that they're still perfectly intact. So other, other types of inflammatory cells that you can see within um, the histiocyte, okay, occasionally you'll see plasma cells and even, even red blood cells. This process is called imperipoesis. So here you can see that plasma cells, that's a plasma right there with the perinuclear clearing, all contained within these histiocytes. 
So it's it's fairly reproducible, and in addition to the imperipoesis, which can be also seen in other entities, the cytology of the histiocyte is an important factor. So these histiocytes are characteristic in that they also stain for S100, and they and they will be CD68 positive. Usually, you don't need those stains because the lesion is so characteristic and the histiocyte is just so uh, different. But in, in other areas, if, you, if we look over here, yes, in this fibrotic area where partial, partial regression of this lesion, you may see, you know, here, you may see some, some vaguely histiocytoid uh, cells and throwing an S100 at this is actually quite helpful and often a diagnosis can be made when otherwise it look you know this area looks very different from that other area but um, it's one in the same lesion I'm trying to find a, a good histiocyte in here so maybe that's a histiocyte and then you got some other inflammatory cells in there so so in summary we have a nodular tumor multinodular tumor it looks like at least a component of it is within the subcutis um, and from low power it's this pale <clears throat> Uh, pink and these sort of purple blue cells and higher power the histiocyte is very characteristic in Rosai Dorfman in that it has uh, vesicular open chromatin the cells are large they form this mesh uh, syncytium like mesh and prominent nucleoli are typically present in there and <clears throat> here's here's a good example of that and in peripoesis, where you have inflammatory cells contained within the cytoplasm that are not being destroyed. Thanks again, guys. If this has helped you at all, please like and subscribe. I typically post a video every day. Until next time.